viewers and welcome to the part 5 of the lecture series on static timing analysis. In the previous video or the part 4 of the series, we have seen a brief introduction of STA, setup analysis and also discussed how to calculate the maximum operating frequency of a circuit. So in this video, we will start a discussion with the hold analysis and learn critical part delay. In the last video, we were dealing with this circuit where we had a launch shift flop, a capture shift flop, and some combination logic in between them. And also, the entire circuit is uh, synchronized with the clock signal. In setup analysis, our main objective was to make sure that on the rising edge of the clock, the data at the output of the launch flip flop uh, has to become stable and reach the input of the capture flip flop at least, uh, uh, at least before setup time with respect to the next active edge of the clock. That is with respect to this instant. Okay. Now, uh, keeping this principle in, uh, in hand, we derived an expression or a condition that is TAD should be less than DRT. Data arrival time should, uh, must be less than data uh, required time. We also defined a term called setup slack, which is nothing but the difference between these times, DRT minus DAT. Okay, so if we, if we uh, fabricate a device having setup violation, can we use it? Yes, we can use it. We can still use it by adjusting the parameters in the equation. Let us see how. If the setup slack is positive, then there is still some margin left in the timing path. On the other hand, if the setup slack is negative, then it means that our design has uh, violated the setup requirements. So in order to restore the setup requirements, in order to meet the setup requirements again, we have to either decrease the clock to, to delay or decrease the combination logic delay or decrease the setup time or we can also increase the clock scale or we can increase the clock period that is T clock. Okay. Now let us look, uh, look at what is hold analysis. In hold analysis, uh, our main objective is to make sure that on the rising edge of the clock, the data launched by the launch flip flop should not reach and become stable at the input of the capture flip flop before the hold time has passed after the active edge of the clock. That is, if this is my active edge of the clock and this is my hold time, then this data that is launched by the launch flip flop should not reach before this, this time, this instant. If it reaches before this instant, then the data which is already present at the input of capture which is supposed to get captured will get corrupted by the D1 which is not a desired case. Okay, so one more important point to be noted is that while doing hold analysis we are not uh, bothered or uh, not, we, not, we are not concerned about the clock period or clock frequency because uh, we are de dealing both the flip-flop with respect to the same, act same active edge of the clock. That is the reason we don't care about it. Let us see few cases. First, let's start with the ideal case. That is, zero clock to two delay, zero uh, clock skew, but non-zero hold time. On the active edge of the clock, the launch flip flop will launch the stable output D1 after zero time. Okay, and this data D1 takes T com to take to reach the input of the capture flip flop. Now, in order to avoid this data, this uh, New, new data to corrupt the already present data D0 which is to be captured it has to arrive after the, after the hold time with respect to clock that is the equation will be T clock plus T com should be greater than see after means greater than hold time plus clock see as I was uh, discussing before in uh, hold analysis the clock signal is common to both both of them matlab the both the flip flops are defined with, with, with respect to the same edge so therefore, this clock signal is not, we are not bothered about this T, T clock. It will eventually get cancelled. And therefore, the relation will be T com greater than T hold. Let us see case 2. Here, we expand this by including clock to Q delay. It is non-zero. So here, on the active edge of the clock, the launch will flop take some uh, extra time, some finite amount of time to produce the active, uh, stable output after the active edge of the clock. That is, the 
the data arrival expression will uh, get altered here. See, this data takes TC to Q delay to reach here and it takes T form to reach the input of the capture flip flop. Now, this must be getting at the full time. So, T com plus TC to Q delay should be greater than THD. This is the condition here. Now, let us see a full practical case. That is, uh, TC uh, clock to Q delay is uh, non zero. Clocks Q is non zero and the uh, whole time is also non zero. So, here let us comprehend this case by considering uh, both DAT and DRT. We will find them individually. Okay. So, first DAT, data arrival time. So, this data D1, see on the active edge of the clock, on the active edge of the clock, this clock signal takes delta 1 time to reach or to trigger the launch flip flop. Okay. And then after getting triggered, this launch flip flop takes uh, TC to Q delay, uh, clock to Q delay to produce the stable output D1 and this D1 takes T com to reach the input of the clock uh, to reach the input of the capture. So therefore the data arrival time would be delta 1 plus the clock to Q delay plus T com. Now let's calculate DRT that is data required time. Now this clock signal takes delta 2 time to reach the input of the capture. In order to avoid the whole condition so this has to this has to be greater than T hole, T hole plus delta 2. This is delta 2, T hole. This is a data required time. In order, in order to avoid the whole condition, hold violation, the data arrival time should be greater than data required time. Then only the new data, D0, will not be corrupted by T1. So, T com plus delta 1 plus T C to Q should be greater than total time plus delta 2. Okay. Now, let us solve a numerical. Here we have a launch with flop. whose uh, clock to Q delay is 5 nanoseconds and the uh, capture flip flop whose uh, whole time is 3 nanoseconds and both are separated by combination logic whose delay is uh, 2 nanoseconds okay and the clock C of 7 nanoseconds so now let us calculate the data arrival time here that is first it takes 0, zero seconds and then this launch flop takes 5 nanoseconds clock to Q delay and then it takes 2 nanoseconds so 0 plus 5 plus 2 7 nanoseconds as the data arrival time okay then the data required time simply calculate it 7 nanoseconds plus whole time 3 nanoseconds so 3 plus 7 that is 10 nanoseconds so as you can clearly see the data arrival time is less than data required time which is which is nothing but whole violation so in order to prevent this or in order to avoid this whole violation we have to either uh, increase the combination logic delay or decrease the clock skew delay. Let's say uh, my new combination logic delay has 6 nanoseconds. So my data arrival time will be 6 plus 5 which is 11. Now this is greater than 10. So therefore there is no whole violation. Okay so this is the way we can prevent the whole time setup violations. Okay let us summarize all the points together. The data arrival time is given by t, uh, delta 1 plus t clock to q delay plus combination logic delay. Data required time is given by delta 2 plus whole time. So for the proper operation of the circuit that is to avoid the head up uh, to avoid the whole, uh, whole violation this is the mandatory condition. Data arrival time should be greater than data required time all the, all the time. And then few important terms that is select uh, is the difference between data arrival time and data required time DAT minus DRT. See if you if you remember in setup time we had the exact opposite formula DRT minus DAT. The next clock skew is the difference between the times taken by the clock signal to reach the input of the launch and capture. That is delta 2 minus delta 1. And let us solve a problem here. This is an important problem. He is asking us to find the minimum time period and maximum clock frequency. Okay. Setup time is given. Okay, setup time of capture is 6. Clock to Q delay of launch is 4 nanoseconds and uh, two combination logics are present here. Okay, first delay is 7 nanoseconds and second delay is 8 nanoseconds. Okay. So, uh, in order to avoid the setup violation, we have to consider data arri arrival time should be less than data required time. This is the condition here. 
because he's asking to find the maximum uh, clock period and max maximum clock period uh, minimum clock period and maximum clock frequency okay the first one so here the data arrival time would be 4 seconds for 0 plus 4 seconds plus 7 plus 8 that is uh, 19, 19 nanoseconds and the data required time will be 0 plus 6 no uh, data required time would be t clock minus 6 seconds right it has to arrive before t clock minus 6 seconds that is t clock minus 6 so t clock will be greater than 25 nanoseconds and therefore we get maximum clock frequency at uh, 40, uh, 40 megahertz now let us see what is critical path <coughs> Uh, critical path is defined as the longest delay having the maximum signal uh, signal propagation delay between the input and output so it plays an important role because it plays an important role in uh, lim limiting the clock speed so that is the reason we have to learn this concept uh, so let us learn this con concept by solving the problem first let us find the propagation delays of all the paths First, the yellow path. It takes 8 nanoseconds plus to avoid the setup uh, violation. Uh, we have to add 3 plus uh, 5. See, 5, uh, 5 is this and then 3. So, 60 nanoseconds. Next, green path. It takes 7 nanoseconds plus uh, 3 plus 5. This is common. So, 15 nanoseconds. And then the red path. It takes 8 nanoseconds plus uh, 9 nanoseconds <coughs> plus uh, 5 nanoseconds and 3 nanoseconds that is 25 nanoseconds then the black path from here it simply takes uh, 5 plus 3 nanoseconds 5 clock to queue clock to queue delay and uh, 3 to avoid the setup uh, violation so 8 nanoseconds and then the purple path this will take uh, 9 nanoseconds plus 3 plus 5 that is 70 nanoseconds so it is clearly visible that the worst case condition is the maximum propagation path this is 25 nanoseconds and therefore this uh, red path is the critical path critical path and the critical path delay is 25 nanoseconds now let us see another problem so this is one of the previous year gate questions as you can see the gate delays are mentioned uh, the north gate delay is 22 nanoseconds the inverter ga gate delay is uh, 1 nanosecond and the mux uh, is 1.5 so let us start with the select lines there are two select lines uh, s not and s1 so let us take two cases where uh, t0 and t1 if t0 the path would be if t0 this uh, this is selected and uh, 1 so if t0 s1 becomes 1 so this is selected so this will be the path right if t is equals to 1 uh, let me change the color this will be there and this will be there so this will be my path in case of t1 t equal to 1 first let us find yellow path this is yellow path Okay, first it takes 2 seconds, 2 nanoseconds and then 1.5 and then again 1.5 of the next marks to give stable output 5. So it, this is nothing but 5 nanoseconds. Now for the blue path we have first 1 nanosecond and then 1.5 nanosecond again 2 nanoseconds and finally the multiplexers uh, 1.5 nanosecond to give output y so this is nothing but uh, 3 plus 2 plus 1 6 nanoseconds okay so it is clearly visible that this is the worst uh, we have to consider the worst case right to find the critical part delay it has to be the maximum propagation delay so this is the worst case condition therefore 
this yellow this blue part will be a critical part delay critical part and the delay is 6 nanoseconds so let us end our lecture series at this point uh, i hope it is clear till now if you have any doubts uh, please drop it down in the comment section and if you like this video please like and share with your friends thanks for watching